for the whole market. I don't understand, Mrs. Barrows. You're selling to 20th century customers. Your display figures must look like 20th century people. That's psychology, Mr. Robertson. I mean, who would want to identify themselves with a couple of scarecrows like that? Simply step up production. Increase production by a thousand percent. Um, I'm afraid, Mrs. Barrow. You're afraid, but I'm not. But there's a limit to how much handmade tweed we can get from the weavers. That comes up to our high standard. I've heard that kind of talk before, Mr. Graham. Where's your factory? Factory? Yes, where the tweed is woven. Uh, you see, Mrs. Barrows, it, it's not exactly a factory. Oh, well, come, gentlemen, let's not mince words. I don't care what you call it over here. Where's the stuff made? That's what I want to see. It's made in the Hebrides. The what? Well, never mind. That's where we're going. In the, in the Hebrides? Um, well, uh, I'm off there next week to pay the weavers their advance money. Advance? money. Yes, you see, they have to have the three months pay in advance. Three months in advance? Well, no wonder you don't get productivity. How do other factory workers manage? But these are not factory workers. I have news for you. From now on, they are. And they clock in just like any other factory workers. Do you have time clocks? No, I thought as much. Well, you must order them pronto. For each of them, Mrs. Bach. For every man jack of them. Yes, Mrs. Three months in advance? Well, it looks like I got here just in time. to move the weavers. They've been making tweed here for hundreds of years. They still make it in much the same way. Yeah, Mr. Martin, you don't surprise me. It's less primitive nowadays, you understand. How primitive can you get? Oh, just get that picture. Isn't that something? Don't bother to stop on my account. I've got no time to be a tourist. Let's press on to the tweed business. Uh, this is it. What is it? Well, uh, Jock and Chrissy McNeil here are two of our best weavers. You mean that's all there is to it? Oh, no, no. We've about 700 of them scattered all over the island. Well, are they all that old? No, we've got some that... Well, I suppose there's no production that can't be rationalized. I beg your pardon? Well, you've heard of time and motion study, of course. Though how that could be applied here, I don't quite see. We've plenty of time here, Mrs. Barrows, but there's not a great deal of motion. Oh, come now, Rip Van Winkle. Don't tell me you've never heard of mechanization. Well, I suppose it doesn't matter as long as Mr. McPherson has. Just wait till I hit him with my plan for centralizing the weaving. Well, you go... Oh, must look smart, you know. Now, you go off and do whatever it is you have to do, and then let's get the hell out of here. What do you think of it? Good effect, eh? Yes, it's, uh, it's very nice, sir. Is it for an advertisement? You'd be surprised. This is a model of the new factory Mrs. Barrows wants me to build for the house of Macpherson. Centralize all the weaving. What do you think of that, eh? You can't mean it, Mr. Macpherson. Well, I don't know. I mean, what do you think? Do I like it or don't I? Hmm? Well, it's not for me to say, sir. I mean, what would your father have said? Well, I don't know. Father says it's a lot, didn't he? But we can't dwell in the past. We've got to move into the 20th century. Encyclopedias of the future may talk of the MacPherson new method of tweed manufacture. I really ought to get one or two of those miniature cars put outside the front entrance. They look absolutely marvellous. Robert, you're quite sure you don't mind me going on talking about this? I mean, well, I I'm not interfering, am I? My dear, it's your job to interfere. All right, Robert. Then I'm going to give it to you straight from the shoulder. 
Now, honestly, there is nothing wrong with my improvements. It's those old gremlins you've got working them. And if you're as smart as I think you are, you'll get rid of them. Get rid of them? Every man, Jack. You can't have them and progress. And as for those weavers, well, I mean, they could just draw their pensions and take to the caves. That's how much you need them. But who'd make the cloth? Join the 20th century, Robert. Stop making cloth for the privileged few. Make cloth for the millions. Build a factory of today to make the cloth of today. Synthetic fiber. Are you all right, darling? Oh, yes, sir. Not you, you great oh, old... See. Oh. oh, it's time you got rid of him, too. And this old crate. Oh, Robert, you could have the whole industry by its ears. I've got the slogan for you, too. McPherson's fiber's what you need. Better far than handmade tweed. May I trouble you for your name, sir? McPherson, Robert McPherson. Well, that be McPherson's tweeds now. Synthetic fiber. Synthetic fiber? Uh, there was some talk of a factory. Aye, and there's more than just talk. The weavers are going to be evicted from their crops. You're talking nonsense, Andrew. Why should they be? Why? I'll tell you why. So as they can get their old age pensions and live in the caves. You are drunk, Andrew, darling. <laughs> He's only just discovered it. But what could it mean? They're surely not going to stop the weaving. Stop the weaving. They're going to make class for the million. Her and Mr. McPherson. McPherson's fibers, what? Fiber. Uh, synthetic fiber. <laughs> Mr. Graham. Who's...